is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm your host, George Camel, and we are taking your calls today about whatever you want to talk about, whatever's going on in your life, in your mind. Maybe you're worried about inflation. Maybe you've got a pile of debt you want to clean up. Maybe you're investing for the future and you're not sure how to move forward. I am here for you, and I'm flying solo today. No co-host, so we're, we're going to either watch the world burn or we're going to have a fun show today, and I'm, I'm hoping, hoping for the latter. Kelly is has her hands up high. She's encouraging me, which is rare if you know Kelly in the booth. So give us a call. If you're one of those millennials or you're Gen Z and you're going, hold on, give us a call. How do I do that? Does Snapchat have that feature? Is that a TikTok? No. You have to actually – there's a there's an app on your phone that says phone, and if you tap on that, you can dial this number. Write it down, folks. 888-825-5225. Jenna will pick up, and if you're nice to her, she'll let you through, and we will talk about money. Now, the boomers out there, you know how this works. You've been using this thing for, for centuries. So if you're my mom or dad, you want to call in with some encouragement. If you're Dave, wherever Dave is, who knows? He's probably on a beach somewhere sipping on a, a fancy drink with an umbrella. If he's listening in, Dave can call in too. It's a free show. And that's how we like it. So give us a call, 888 5225 Jay starts off this hour in Phoenix, Arizona. Jay, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hey, thanks for having me. Sure. How can I help? Um, so I just wanted to know if we should still be making um, minimum payments to our nominant loans if we think the settlement might um, forgive those loans, potentially. Mm. Well... That's a great question, first of all, Jay. Uh, speak directly in your phone for me just so we can hear you nice and clear. So yep. what, are the, what are the terms of the settlement that you've heard so far? Um, so the reason why I think it might apply to us is the school that my wife went to, um, Art Institute in Minnesota, uh, they have since closed. I and mean, they were part of a uh, Justice Department class action suit for predatory um, recruiting practices, and then um, obviously we fall in line with the the, the Navient, uh predatory, you know, loan, what have you. So yeah, uh, we're we're hopeful that 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 will you know that we'll fall in line with that. But you know, it's still saying that we have minimum payments due. Um, and my concern is some of the stipulations that I I, I read into said that. Um, some of the loans that would be forgiven would be the ones that have uh, that haven't been paid in the last like seven months or something like that. So I'm like, I mean, should we be making payments on these? Or well, what happens if you don't make the payment? I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like that option. I mean, if I'm in your shoes, I'm getting a lot of clarity about who this is for, if I'm going to get approved, but I'm not going to sit around for a year, not make payments or make minimum payments. I want this thing out of your life, whether or not the settlement happens and whether it applies to your situation. So yes, I would continue making minimum payments until you get more information. But in the meantime, I mean, you should know the results of this pretty soon, right? It, it, it says I will be notified by July. Oh, that is a long time. Yeah. Here's my thing. I mean, we do have other we do have other debt that we're going to pay down in the meantime. It, okay. It's just going to rearrange our, our snowball a little bit, so like we can pay the car. We also have federal student loans that that we can be paying. What's the total amount of your student loans? Uh, it is sixteen thousand is with Navient, and twenty five thousand is with the Fed. Okay. So the only ones that could be forgiven are those Navient ones, right? Probably, yeah, from that settlement. And where does that, that fall in your debt snowball currently? Uh, it's our top two. Okay. So number three is our is our car. Uh, we owe about a little over eleven on that. So we were thinking of just throwing everything at the car, I suppose, until we figure out, see what shakes out in the next six months. Yeah. So the car is your smallest debt currently. Uh, no, our, um, we have two private Navient loans. Um, one is five, one is 10, the car is 11. Mm. 
Well, I mean, if you want to go ahead and attack the car, that's fine. What I don't want is for this debt just to sit around and we don't have a resolution and they kick the can down the road and now it's August, October, and you waited all this time and they said, no, nah, we're not going to forgive the loans. And right. if I'm you, I just want to take control. I want to be done. It's not a major amount of debt. If this was $100,000 that could be forgiven, I might say, all right, well, let's let's wait and see how this shakes down. But um, right. with, with your snowball and you guys attacking this thing, it's only going to be a few extra months, right? How, how much uh, – what's your income, household? Uh, we just got it up to about 150 Heck yeah. So with 150 how quickly are you going to pay off all your debt total? Uh, we could probably do it by the end of this year. But there, my wife is uh, in a wedding party in Hawaii, so that might – you know. That potentially is like another like three months maybe attacked on to the end. Whoa. How expensive is this uh, situation going to be for her? Uh, the it's Hawaii like 5K? trip? Probably. Yeah. Uh, we kind of budgeted it at like 3500 ish so okay. we're, we're putting a couple hundred bucks aside. Okay. Well, making 150 you guys should be able to cash flow this, and honestly, you could clean up the Navient debt really quickly and not have to wait and hope – for a settlement. So that's what I would do personally if I was in your shoes. Um, if you want to start paying off the car first, I mean, that's fine. But again, I, I just don't want this thing getting kicked down the road and then you end up in the same situation you were back at square one. Right. But get the details. I mean, I, I would get some real clarity if, yes, 100% chance this is going to be part of the settlement and it will be paid in July and my loans are a part of that. Get some clarity on that because I do think it could help the debt snowball. And I mean, that's what your question is, is, you know, could this help our situation if we just wait and let this be forgiven? But right. I just – I have very little faith in the forgiveness system and I understand this is a settlement. This was predatory. And I hope that happens more because, the as you know, there's so many scam – situations out there where colleges are, you know, price gouging and hurting the students out there and saddling them with student loan debt. And you guys happen to be a victim of that. So if I'm you, I just want to take control and I don't want to put my future in someone else's hands or even in a settlement's hands and hope for that situation. Right. Yeah. But thanks for the call, Jay. I hope it works out for you guys. I do hope that you get this thing figured out. This is beyond just a general student loan forgiveness thing. This is predatory colleges. This is scam colleges that promise one thing and became another, and they're shutting down, and a lot of people are in a lurch, and you're, you're one of those people, unfortunately, you, you and your wife. But it's a great question, and I just always choose to be in the boat of taking control. And making $150,000, I mean, this is a blip in your life, paying off sixteen k whether it's forgiven or not. So I just don't want you to be stuck in paralysis mode going, well, should we? I guess we shouldn't make these payments. I guess we should move on to the other debt. Follow the plan. The plan works every time you work it. Use the debt snowball. List your debts from smallest to largest, regardless of the interest rate, and start to attack it and feel the progress and feel the freedom as you free up payment after payment. Give us a call, 888-825-5225. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality and host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, all of which you can find on The Ramsey Network along with The Ramsey Show. Open phones this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. You call us up. We'll talk about your life and your money. James joins us in St. Louis. James, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi. Hey, how are you? Doing well, thank you. How can I help today? Yes, I have a question regarding uh, medical bill debt. Um, my wife and I have recently incurred about $10,000 in medical bills that were due to an unplanned uh, emergency operation for her uh, delivering our baby. And my question is, uh, what is the best way for us to go about paying that off without going into debt to sure. pay it off? So you've got a $10,000 bill from the hospital. Correct. Is this uh, is have have you contacted them to let them know that you can't pay this in full? Well, we are in the process of contacting them, trying to get that reduced. Okay. Uh, currently, the the first option we were given is to pay pay it off five hundred dollars a month, and we don't have that kind of money currently to to pay five hundred dollars a month on on medical bills. Okay, so that's what they were willing to do is put you on a payment plan of five hundred a month. Yes, we are. But well, we are going to contact them again to try to get the bill reduced uh, further down than ten thousand. Okay. And with this ten thousand, how recent was it? Uh, November the eighteenth is when the baby was born. Okay. Well, you you may have a hard time trying to negotiate this bill down because of how recent it is. If it was really old or if it was in collections, you may have an easier time trying to negotiate it. So it se- sounds like at this point you need to negotiate down the payment plan and attack this thing with a vengeance. Do you guys have any other debt? Uh, yes, very very little. Um, we have about $75 in credit card debt, and then uh, we have uh, one car that we're currently leasing, but I can't get out of it currently. Okay. You said $75 in credit card debt. Correct. Okay, so we can we can get rid of that thing this month. Oh uh, yeah, no problem at all. What's your household income? Twenty five hundred a month. I'm the I'm the only income earner currently. And is that take home pay or is that gross? Take home pay. Okay, so we're bringing in about thirty grand. And you said your your wife isn't working; she's with the baby at home. Correct. Okay, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in a warehouse. A warehouse. Are there yeah. any opportunities to put an overtime at the warehouse? Not anymore. Okay. That went away. That's been cut out. Yes. Well, it sounds like you're about to pick up some side jobs. Are you open to that? Um, yes. If I can get a side job a side job or a different full-time job that has better hours than my current schedule. Currently, I work 12-hour days. 12-hour days, and you're taking home 2500 yeah. a month? Yes. Ooh. I mean, it's you may need a, a career change. I mean, you could go deliver pizzas and make more than that right now. If I'm you, I'm going to be on the hunt for a different job. I mean, do you love your job? Uh, it has its pros and cons, but I don't see myself there for forever as a career. Yeah. Well, on the career side, uh, we don't need to get into that today, but I want to hook you up with Ken Coleman's Get Clear assessment. So I'll have Jenna pick up after we're done here, and she'll get you plugged in with that assessment. That'll walk you through exactly what you were created to do, how you're wired, what you will love doing. And the the truth is you're going to make good money doing it once you figure that out. Because right now you have an income problem. This debt is not insurmountable. Total. I mean, obviously, there were some decisions made. We're going we're gonna to cut up the credit card. We're going to get out of this car lease when we can, and we're never going to look back and never do debt again. Right. That's our plan. So if that's the plan going forward, this is a temporary situation where we need to get your income up so that you can afford the monthly payments, afford to put food on the table, and support your family. Because it's, that's really hard to do uh, at $2,500 a month when you have a pile of debt. So this is going to look like a okay. lot of long nights for for you, and that's why I'm going, man, if you can work a job where you're working 40 hours a week instead of 12-hour days and make more money and have time to do a side job to bring in even more money, that changes this whole situation. Okay. So I would be looking around the St. Louis area and seeing who's hiring, what are they paying, what skill set do I have that I can bring to the table, and what can I contribute in order to clean up this mess. Um, and you can continue to try to push on, on the negotiation, but at the end of the day, 
your ten thousand dollars in debt, and we got to clean up the ten thousand um, dollars. The credit card is okay. going to come first, and you said the only other kind of debt is your car lease. Correct. I got thirteen payments left on that. Okay, I would look out, look into the the buyout amount for that, and see if it's worth doing that to get out of this lease, because that is man. I mean, we call it a fleece for a reason. You just get screwed on those car leases. And making $30,000 a year, I don't know what kind of car this is, but I bet it's it's worth a pretty penny, right? Uh, the sticker price on it when I got it was $26,000. Man, that is a large percentage of your world. So it sounds like we're going to get to work, and I know that that may not be fun, but right now you got to take care of your family, you got to take care of this debt, and then you're going to look back and say, never again. Never again am I going to have to work 16-hour days worrying about this pile of debt, worrying about my baby and my wife at home, and that's going to change everything for you. Are you willing to do that? Definitely. Definitely. Okay. I'm rooting for you, man. I know I know you you sound deflated like oh, more work. I'm doing 12-hour days, man. I had to take a break just to call into the show. But I'm telling you, dude, you're going to look back at this and you're going to say it was so worth it. It was so worth it to change my family tree. Thanks for the call. Stephanie joins us in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Stephanie, welcome to the Ramsey show. Hi, how are you today? Doing great. How can hey, I help? Thank you. Um I have a question about caring for my father ongoing. Um, he has dementia. He just went into memory care. Mm. He has some cash that would probably last for about a year. However, he also has a house um, and two acres that's probably worth about 150000 that has a ladybird deed on it. And if he passes away, the ladybird keeps it out of probate. And it will go to myself and my siblings. Um, and it's my understanding that that would shield it from Medicare because I'm – or Medicaid, I mean, because I think – uh, he's going to run out of money if he lasts longer than a year. And um, we would either have to pursue the Medicaid or sell the house. And I just was curious about your opinion on that. Mm. Well, what what is the house doing currently? Just sitting there? Uh, well, he just went in a couple weeks ago. So my sister's living here until we can get it either ready for rental or sale. And now that your sister's involved here, have you guys had an honest conversation about what you guys yeah. want to do? Like, are you on the yeah, same page? Uh, yes, we're all we're all just kind of uh, trying to figure out um, what will happen with it. I think we could all go either way. We all get along very well, and we can come to a consensus pretty easily. So, yeah. Well, if no one's going to live there as their primary residence, and it's just sitting there, and no one really wants to hassle with it, I would sell it personally. Okay. I mean, if it doesn't have like this big sentimental value, and we're, we have big plans for this, um, I would. You said it would. How much would it sell for? Uh, probably somewhere around one hundred fifty thousand, or just a little bit more. And it's paid for. Um, it is paid for, uh, debt free. The the it is my dad's only other asset since we sold some other property, um, and it's just the question of if I believe it cannot be claimed by Medicaid and would transfer to us as an inheritance since it doesn't go to probate. Yeah, I would make sure to look into that, work with a, an estate attorney or a tax pro to make sure that your plan is going to work out the way you think it will. Right. But outside of that, yeah. it doesn't sound like there's much need to keep this house. It doesn't sound like it's going to appreciate in value or anything like that. You're not going to rent it out. So if I'm you guys, you're going to you're take the 150k and split the money at that point? Well, if my father dies, that's definitely what we'll do with it. But yeah. um, we, we're we just curious whether we should try and keep it as an inheritance or whether we should sell it for his care. Mm. Well, right now it sounds like there's some things in flux with not knowing what's going to happen with Dad. So I don't think you need to be in a rush to make this move. But I think once the dust is settled and we figure out what's happening here, I would sell it and use that money to either help take care of him or use it as a blessing of an inheritance, you know, if and when he does pass. I appreciate the call. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Debt is smart. Saving and investing is smart. But there's one key to winning with money that people overlook all the time, and that is protecting your finances from emergencies. That's where insurance comes into play. Now, there are 10 kinds of insurance coverage you might need based on what your life looks like today. And so we built a tool called the Coverage Checkup to show you exactly which types you need to add, drop, or adjust. We'll even rank your coverage list by importance. We'll email it to you and connect you with a Ramsey trusted insurance provider so that you can get your plan in place fast. Seriously, this could be the most important five minutes you spend today. One of our fans, Donald, wrote in, and I like how he put this. For anyone who has not completed this checkup, do it now. You never know when something will happen, and you never want to leave your family in a bad situation. Visit RamseySolutions.com slash checkup to take our quick coverage checkup. That's RamseySolutions.com slash checkup. Do not let an emergency sneak up on you. Protect your family now. Sarah joins us on the line from Calgary, Alberta. Sarah, I see on my screen it says you are debt-free. Yes. Hi, George. It's, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. You as well. Congratulations. Thank you so much. How much debt did you pay off? 63000 <laughs> All right. And how long did this take? 18 months of gazelle intensity. Woo! Crushed it. Okay. And what was your range of income during that time? So I started off um, just graduating from university. I was making about 25 k in Canadian dollars, obviously. And now I'm up to about 75 k Wow. Way to go. What do you do for a living? Um, so I do still work at a retail store, so I do sales, but then I got a full-time job working a nine-to-five as an executive recruiter. Oh, that's fantastic. And how old are you? I'm 24. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You got a hold of this stuff at the right time. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of debt was the 63000 Um, A mix of everything. I had my student loans. I had a car loan, credit cards, line of credit. Um, really anything I could get my hands on. <laughs> wow. So this is interesting. You were very normal. You had all kinds of debt. You were collecting it like it was Beanie Babies back in the 90s. What yep. happened 18 months ago where you said, you know what, no more debt, no more games? Yeah. Um, so I graduated university in April of 2020, and that was in, you know, COVID is, is kind of taking off. And I had really wanted to move out of my parents' house. And when I started to think about how I couldn't afford rent, I really couldn't afford to do anything. I needed to make a plan, get a job and, and really buckle down. And, and luckily in Canada, we got a bit of financial support as I was somebody who was affected by COVID in, in terms of um, being a frontline worker, dare I say, and not a healthcare worker, but in, in uh, retail. And so they allowed us to kind of take some time away. And with that help from the government and then finding Dave Ramsey, I, I really just realized how debt free is, is the way to go. Wow. So how'd you get connected to us? What was the thing where you went, oh, I didn't know about this plan? Yeah, I, I'd heard about Dave Ramsey growing up a little bit, but my parents are not people who talk about money a bunch. So I remember, you know, in April of 2020 being so stressed and every day I'm waking up thinking like, where am I, how am I going to pay these bills? How am I going to shuffle debt around? And then I was looking on YouTube like, hey, advice to get debt free. And, and obviously Dave Ramsey is one of the top. And so I probably went days on end watching almost every video I could every podcast and just really being like wow listen to all these stories and the changes it's made and and so honestly yeah just YouTube and and social media connected wow you just went all in our YouTube guy in the booth Zach he's going crazy he loves it that's what we like to see life change see YouTube can be used for good if it's in the right hands yes way to go so what were the sacrifices you made you said you were gazelle intense what did that look like for you 
Uh, well, one, staying at home, I'm, I'm lucky that my parents didn't make me pay rent, but it comes at a different cost of, um, you know, situation and then feeling like an, an, I'm an adult, but I still live with my parents. And um, I started to do a lot of free stuff. So my boyfriend and I would go disc golfing or, or just go for walks. And, and so I had to miss out on some plans. I, I didn't take a grad trip because I couldn't afford it. And it was also COVID, so that, that helped as well. But really just kind of, you know, missing out on on dinners and not ordering big stuff when I did go out and and staying at home. (laughs) Wow. And I see your list here. uh, If you're watching on YouTube, you have things to look forward to if I save. Was that, did you kind of have that as your why? You kind of dangled that in front of you saying, hey, I want dogs. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to own a house. I have dreams here. Yeah, exactly that. And and so I just had that posted right beside my bedroom door. So every time I left and came in, it was right there. And one day, you know, this door frame is going to be yours. One day you get to have a dog running with you. And, and one day you do that grad trip to Hawaii and it's going to feel so much better debt free. Wow. That's a mature place to be when you realize, you know what, I'm just saying no right now. Because a lot of people yeah. your age, they go, well, Dave doesn't want me to have stuff. He doesn't want me to eat out. He doesn't want me to go on trips. He's just a fuddy duddy. And you realized, no, I'm saying no right now. So I can say yes to the next. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. I'm so proud of you. Way to go. How does it feel to be debt free? It it is incredible. Like I kind of mentioned, I I honestly used to wake up every day and think about like how am I going to move debt around to pay my insurance or pay my car note or my student loans are now, you know, adding to my budget or air quotes around budget at the time, but it was so stressful at, and at such a young age and now I I wake up and and even a couple weeks ago I had a car emergency that cost me two grand but because I have savings and because I have a good job it was just like okay fix the car and pay the bill and and you're okay like you just it's not yawned and moved on yeah <laughs> wow yeah. that's incredible so did people think you were crazy for doing this stuff I don't know what Canada's vibe is on, on the Ramsey plan but did you have people <laughs> who are like what are you doing why are you paying that off I mean it'll get forgiven eventually. Yeah. So I, I'm not aware that we have like as much as a forgiveness program as, as, you know, people talk about in America, but I definitely had family who is like, well, everybody's in debt. Like there's no, that's just the way it is. Like you have to have a bill, you have to do this. And um, yeah, there's definitely people who just thought it was strange. And, and luckily I was able to, you know, my boyfriend was a huge support to me and my dad was a huge support to me. He was really operational and, and making sure I didn't have to pay rent while I was going through this, but a lot of other people in my life were like, okay, well, good luck. Like, you're probably going to go into debt again anyway. And I'm like, no, I'm not. (laughs) Man, they must be real fun at parties. Yeah, exactly, right. (laughs) So so you've done this stuff. You're 24. You paid off $63,000 in 18 months. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I would definitely say, one, having a support. Like, I know I used to emotionally shop, and that's what added to a lot of my debt. But kind of talking about that, and especially with my partner, he's been so supportive through this, and, and saying, like, listen, I'm having a tough day, and I, I, I want to go shopping, or I want to do this. And he would be able to find different ways for us to do fun things and, and kind of help me feel better. And so a good support system, I think, is a huge part of it. And, and then the other part is that, you know, if you can work two or three jobs, like, that's what I had to do. And, and it's, it's only for a moment. A season is what I love to hear from you guys. And once the season is done, then you get to live and give like nobody else. And so I'm really looking forward to that time in my life. And um, yeah, just work when you can, however you can, wherever you can. It's going to be a lot, but it's going to be so worth it. Man, well said. Well, it's amazing what happens when you get a fire in your belly and you're not afraid to work and you're not afraid to create some discipline in your life and you say no to things. And I saw on my screen, you said, you cannot afford another shirt. You have that at the bottom of your debt list to encourage yourself that you can't afford this. You can't afford to be broke. It's very expensive to be broke. Exactly. And and no matter how many shirts you have in your closet, you're still broke. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That was a personal attack on many of our listeners. Yes. I love it. Well, we're so proud of you. We've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you, a number one national bestseller. That is absolutely the next step in your journey at 24 years old with no payments. You're going to do so unbelievably well and be so wealthy and so generous. And we also have a copy of the Total Money Makeover to send to you. You can pass that along to one of those people who said you're crazy and that you're always going to have payments. And you can you can pass that to them to go, no, it can be different for you. We're yeah. so proud of you. Are right, you ready for so this? Much. Yes. 
Okay, it's Sarah <laughs> from Calgary, Alberta. $63,000 paid off. Student loans, the car loan, the credit cards, the line of credit, you name it, she had it. Paid it off in 18 months, making 25 to 75. Count it down, Sarah. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free! There it is. There it is. Wow. If Sarah can do it, you can too, America. It's not too late for you. I don't care if you're 24, 44, 64. You can take control. This is The Ramsey Show. You are listening to The Ramsey Show. Open phones this hour, 888 5225 Steve joins us in Kansas City. Steve, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Well, thank you, George. Good talking to you. Um, I was looking for the better than I deserve. Um, oh, man, well. if, if I tried that, Steve, you wouldn't understand the hate mail that would come my way, you know? <laughs> but one of these days, I'll well, risk hey. it. <laughs> well, hey, George, i got a quick question for you. So here's my scenario. I, I'm i in my early 50s, okay? okay? And so I've got a home with a $95,000 home payoff. I've got right at seven years left to pay on the home. I have about 85000 in savings. My question really is, the friends I have that are into big into investing, I have one friend that says, pay the house off, don't even question it. I have four other guys that say, oh, no, you want to use their money at 2.5% to pay the home off and then use the 80000 and invest it because you can double that in seven years, and that's about the time I got my house to pay off. So when I do the math, and if I just completely pay it off by each payment, I'm at 145 So if I look at that, I pay an extra 45 or 50 basically. You see what I'm saying? I do the math, and then oh, sure. I have 85 in there. Yeah, so, no, this is... Uh, but then the market, yeah. They're, they're not geniuses. They just are looking strictly at math, and that's the problem here. Uh, you can't, you can't you know, detach the emotion out of this, of the emotion of not having a payment in the world, having zero risk because you own your home outright. So what's your mortgage payment? Mm-hmm. It's right at 1,952 a month. 1,952. A month, mm-hmm. So... Let me give you uh, some more math for your buddies if they're listening. You are paying okay. currently uh, almost $24,000 in mortgage payments, and that does not count the interest. So the question is, if you had an extra 24000 plus to invest, how wealthy could you become? I'm right there with you. That's how I feel about it. I mean, I'm just saying if we want to talk strictly math, that's not even talking about the emotional freedom of having not a payment in the world. So I understand what your buddies are saying, and they're really into investing. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, they think, well, why wouldn't you borrow as much money as possible and invest it into the market? That's what they're saying. But as we're seeing Mm -hmm. with the stock market, I don't – I mean, do you want that level of anxiety? Would you – if you paid off your house, you can always go remortgage it and invest it into the market if you really, really miss having a payment. Right. And in the way the market is right now, that's kind of how I'm feeling. Get debt-free first, and then I can invest as much as I can afford at that point. Exactly. I want you to free up this money in your life so that you can really build wealth, so that you don't have to worry about a payment at night. And what's your household income? So give or take, we're right at 200000 take home. Woo! Man, are you guys Baby Steps millionaires? Well, it's funny you say that. I have uh, I have my brand new book sitting here. Now we've always been pretty smart with our money. We we don't have we we have zero debt other than the mortgage. 
Fantastic. So I just got I just got the book though, and I'm going. Uh, I'm a little late getting into this. Um, so we have oh, I'm going to say it's right at seven fifty in in retirement. Awesome. Right now. So I'm thinking if I pay this off this year, which I think is very doable, then I just invest like crazy, right? And then now if we're I talking. can't afford to, then yeah, Man, and we're already yeah. putting in 15% of our tax deferred income as well. Yeah, you're already doing the 15%. So let's focus on the house mm-hmm. payoff. And do you have kids that you're saving mm-hmm. for college for? Well, we have one, and unfortunately, she says she does not want to do college. So okay, I do have some money. I have some money saved for her. And we have some other ideas as far as starting a business and that. So, cool. You know, I have mixed emotions, about that, but uh, that's where that's at. All right. Well, hey, if I'm you, you got eighty-five thousand in savings, and we need to make sure we're setting aside our fully funded emergency fund. Is that part of the eighty-five? No, we've got about twenty thousand in an emergency fund. So you could today get down to ten thousand dollars on the mortgage, and then clean this thing up within a month or two. With your income. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and I've got some commissions. I did I've got a lot of equipment on order. And gosh, I've got in the neighborhood of hundred and seventy five thousand in commissions coming. Wow. This year without selling one more thing. So I think this is a no brainer. It absolutely you know? is. Don't listen to your, your buddies, man. They, of course, are going to look at the market and go, dude, you're an idiot. Why would you pay off your two percent mortgage when you could make ten, right. twelve, eighteen percent of the market? Exactly. Yeah. Well, right. you can follow their plan or you could be debt free, including your mortgage. And uh, personally, I like that plan better. As a guy who, who paid his this. off a month ago. Okay, let me ask you this: If I put in, and I'm just going to do some simple math, but if I put in, oh my gosh, and just invest like crazy, because I really like to do something a little different when I'm 60 and I'm 54 now. Could I get to that million dollar mark? I would think so. If I'm 750 in it now already. Oh, absolutely. Plus the home. You're going to be there in no time making 200 k I mean, think about how much you can save and the catch-up amounts uh, with your age as you head into your retirement. You're going to be unbelievably wealthy. I think so, too, within seven years. Yeah, so I'm not worried about can we make can we make an extra fifty grand by investing in the market. You're going to do fine in retirement if you guys have no payment in the world, including your mortgage. And you've got a million yeah. dollars in retirement. You're going to be all right. Thank God. Listen to your heart, Steve. I I appreciate the call, man. Good stuff. All right. Trey joins us in Pittsburgh. Trey, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, George. Thanks for taking my call. How are you doing? Absolutely. Doing great. How can I help today? Um, I have a question about 529s. Um, I have two kids. Ages are five and two. Um, When my first kid was born, probably about six months after she was born, we went to the bank and started a 529 account. Awesome. Um, we've put $250 a month in it since then. Um, at the birth of our second child, um, my wife and I had a conversation about um, starting a second 529 for him. Um, we went to the bank, and they kind of advised us to keep it at just the single 529 and get the compounding interest off of what's being put in that. Um it's always been like a conversation between my wife and I. Should we or shouldn't we have started a second twenty five twenty nine for him as well? Um, just trying to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, I would. I would not look to my bank to be my financial advisor. And so in this case, uh, they're wrong. I mean, there's nothing wrong with keeping one. But it does complicate things a little bit because when you have one plan, you're going to have to go through some administrative legwork of changing beneficiaries because you can only have one beneficiary on that 529. And so as the five-year-old gets older, you're going to have to switch it over to the two-year-old and make sure there's enough money in there to regulate you know, how much money is needed per child. And on top of that, there, there could be some state tax deductions and credits that increase when you have multiple accounts. So no, the bank okay. is wrong. They don't understand compound interest, which really frightens me that a bank doesn't understand that that $100 over here versus in your other account is going to grow at the same rate. Yeah. And so if I have yeah, two Roth yeah, IRAs and I put 5000 in each, it makes no difference if I had a Roth IRA that had 10000 in one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and my wife had brought up a good point. She's, she had said with the ages of the kids, they're both going to be in college at the same time. 
if, if they choose to go to college. Yeah, so and, the, and that creates that a hassle. Well, yes, yep. Okay, yeah, that, that was my question, and uh, she was right. I hate to tell her that, but she was right. <laughs> that You know what? That is a sign of maturity and a healthy marriage. I appreciate the call, Trey. Uh, pump for those kids to go to college debt-free. That is what we like to see around here. And if you guys haven't tuned into the Borrowed Future documentary, uh, we did a, a world-class documentary that released back in the fall around the student loan crisis and how it is absolutely crushing the American dream. And it's one of my passions is helping millennials and Gen Z figure out that, man, you are going to be saddled with debt. Don't listen to the lies. Don't fall for the peer pressure for society. You can go to college debt-free, and you're living proof of that, Trey. Way to go. Saving up for them. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Our thanks to Ben Hill running the board today, Kelly Daniel, our associate producer, and Jenna Sears running the screening of the phones. We appreciate you and appreciate you, America. We'll be back with you before you know it. a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life, let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality, and it's an open, free call today for you. Give us a call, 888-825-5225. Maybe you need some confirmation about a life decision you're facing. Maybe you had a windfall of money. That's always a fun one. We can talk about that. Maybe you're sick of making payments to lenders and you wish you had that money back in your life to help you accomplish your dreams, not the banks. We can talk about that too. It's your show. Bree kicks us off this hour from Bend, Oregon. Bree, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, George. Thanks so much for taking my call. I'm a big fan. Oh, thank and you. And I That's do need great. confirmation on a big life decision. Oh, perfect. I prophesied <laughs> it. How can I help? Yes. So we are, just to clarify, we're in a very, very small town just outside of Bend. Uh, Bend um, and it's so it's kind of a special situation. I'll try to get to the point as quickly as possible. Um, basically, it's, it's a small town of like 160 people that's in, surrounded completely by farmland. So it's not you can't develop it anymore around this small town. So we have an option to buy a larger home, meets our needs more. Um, it's a great place for us. However, um, with the prices going up in the market, my husband's struggling because he feels like we could build exactly what we would want for the same price if we had a place to do it. However, so in theory, he might be right, but in reality, there's no place at this time to, for us for a lifestyle to build because there's no option. Okay. And so I guess my question is, do we take this opportunity because there's things about the house he doesn't absolutely love and me, I'm trying to really work on contentment and be okay with the things. And if we don't love it, we can fix it over time. Um, but it's a newer house and it's a great house. It's just that, that in his mindset, struggling, you know, to, to say, you know, for that same price, we could do exactly what we want and pick everything out. And, and so I guess I don't want to miss an opportunity with the market going up and everything. It's just the, it's a big decision, and I need advice, I guess. Yeah, so let me get this straight. He wants to build kind of the dream home, and you're saying, hey, there's a great house over here, and we can make it that. We can fix it up over time. But he's saying, no, that's a waste. Let's just build our dream home. Well, he he would love to if we could, but and so I guess in my reality, it could be if things were ever to be able to be developed, it could be five, ten years before an actual lot even was an option. So, I mean, he's right, and I'd love to build too, but... So his plan is a pipe dream, it sounds like. It's not even feasible unless you guys moved to a different town. Correct, and we can't move with our jobs. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it sounds like there's not really options here. There's only one. Yeah, so we'll just stay where we're at and, and be in a small house that doesn't really meet our, our lifestyle needs, I guess. And so therein lies the predicament. This sounds more like you need to get him on the same page 
and not move into this house, and he's just walking around resentful, going, oh, I hate this place. Right, right. <laughs> that sounds like the fear. I think it would be over time. I think it's just he's more frugal, and, and you know, and so I understand where he's coming from. It's just, it's, it's like we have this opportunity, and I don't want to miss it if we can jump on it. Well, I wouldn't worry about the market. I mean, yes, home value will appreciate over time. But don't let that dictate what you're doing right now. Let your finances, your budget dictate. So where are you guys at financially? Are you out of debt? Do you have an emergency fund? Are you investing? Um, we are – well, we are investing. We're pretty much out of debt except oh, right now with this, this limbo phase. We we can pay it all off. We just wanted to let the dust settle if we do the house thing and then pay off as soon as we move in once the dust settles. Oh, boy. Okay, Bree. I was really on your team here, and now we got to take a time out. We got to clean well, up this debt. We can, it's, and we probably should just do it now and then move in. It's just, yeah. You I definitely think should. How much debt? How much debt do you have? What's the total amount? Like five thousand. Okay. What's your household income? One thirty, one thirty-ish. So this thing's paid so off we could, within thirty days. It's gone. Yes, absolutely. But you're hanging on because, well, we just don't know what life's gonna look like. Well, it's just one of those, like, you know, like moving babies. I just kind of scared me <laughs> just knowing that we have opportunity. But um, but it is, it is a big priority for us, and we'll take care of it. And we do invest, and um, we're, we're – so it's just one of those – we need to do it quickly, but, yeah. and we will. Do you have a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months? Yes. So you have that, and you're investing. So you just kind of leapfrogged baby step two and went, let's do three, four, and we'll come, we'll come back around to two. Well, we, and that's the thing is I, we, we, it's just this, in this moment, we were, you know, just in this very, so it is a, I, I promise we were paying it off. <laughs> well, once that's paid off, that'll free your income up a little bit because you're not going to have those payments, which is going to allow you to save up more. So have you guys looked at what the down payment's going to look like for this house? Yes. And we're ready for that. We can definitely afford it and do the, the less than 25%. Awesome. So 15, are you doing a 15 year fixed? Yes. Okay. And it's a payment's less than 25% of your take-home pay. That's awesome. And how much down payment are you looking to put down? About 40. Awesome. You guys are crushing it. <laughs> Thank you. We're trying. Well, and once you do that, remind your husband that you're going to have lots of margin to be able to fix up this house. Mm -hmm. And you can do it over time. And the, angrier, the, the more angry he is at this, the more it's going to be, all right, well, let's get a side job. Let's make some sacrifices. Let's dig in to make these renovations happen faster so that he can love it. I mean, is it cosmetic or is it just every, it's everything? Um, just a, some is and some isn't. But some of it, I feel like, again, it comes back to being contentment, you know, and just being like, this isn't a really big deal in the scheme of things, you know. Yeah. Um, well, it sounds like he had a picture in his mind of what this house was going to be. And because it's not that, he just cannot grapple with the reality. Yeah, definitely. So he needs to compromise a thing, little bit. My thing for 20, yeah, my, my thing for 22 is contentment. And so I'm really trying to be like, you know, this is a great opportunity. Even though it's not, maybe not perfect, but most houses even, I feel like sometimes even if you build a brand new house, there are going to be things you find that you wish you would have done differently. Oh, absolutely. And I'll tell them, I, we built our house that is now paid off. And it's not our, our dream house. It's not perfect. The construction process was a nightmare. Things went wrong. We had to stay on them. It was a legit side job of just keeping up with this house, walking in there, going, oh, gosh, they didn't put the towel rack where they said they would. Oh, gosh, they chose the wrong grout color. I mean, there's a thousand things that, you know, I love new construction, but it can be a big headache. And so uh, there's a lot of perks of just moving into a house that you know exactly what you're getting and you know exactly what to fix. Mm -hmm. So I think That's some of this contentment really needs to rub off on him. <laughs> so you, you guys work, work on that. On <laughs> Have you been through FPU together? Have you gone through Financial Peace University as a couple? Um, separately, we kind of – we well, not the official class, but we followed it um, our own okay. you know, years ago. Yeah. So. Well, that's going to be my gift to you. Jenna's going to pick up. I'm going to gift you a year subscription to Ramsey Plus. And what I encourage you guys to do is get plugged into the Every Dollar Plus budgeting app, get plugged into the Financial Peace University videos, and get on the same page about your vision for the future. That's what I think needs to happen right now because, truthfully, they're, you're in separate places. He wants one thing. You're okay with this thing, with contentment. I want you guys to dream together and get excited about what that future holds. And if that means it's house renovations right now, then you go full Chip and Joanna and you have a blast, right? That's what this looks like. But right now, this is it's as much a marital problem as it is a, a financial one. 
So get this thing right, get them on the same page, Jenna will pick up, and it is uh, our gift to you to get plugged into Ramsey Plus for the year so that you can guys make that progress and do it together as one team. This is The Ramsey Show. serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. job do you picture them having? Is it some kind of high-powered executive position like a VP or a CEO? Well, here's the thing. Only 15% of millionaires actually have jobs like that. The reality is that the top five careers for millionaires in America are as follows. Engineer, accountant, teacher, manager, and attorney. That's just one of the surprising things our team found out when we conducted the largest studies of millionaires ever done. We talked to tens of thousands of millionaires to find out who they are and how they achieve that goal. Our study also made it clear that to become a millionaire, you've got to invest wisely. And a big part of that is getting good investing advice, not from your broke bros telling you to invest in crypto. You've got to work with an investing pro who can walk with you and teach you about the options that are right for you. Our team recommends vetted, trustworthy investing pros from all over the country. We call them SmartVestor Pros. And if you want to get in touch with a SmartVestor Pro in your area, we make it really easy. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor, and you can start building wealth today. That's RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. Rachel joins us in Billings, Montana. Rachel, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi there. Thank you. Absolutely. How can I help we today? Are, um, we're coming into a large sum of money, about 100000 from a debt owed to us. And while the lump sum is great, the debtor was previ- previously paying us about $1,000 a month, which we rely on to meet our monthly obligations. We have one debt. It's our home. The 100000 is not quite enough to pay that off, which would be the easy fix because then it would free up money and we'd be just fine. So I'm looking for some advice or thoughts on a good way to allocate that 100 k in a way that will help us to continue to meet our monthly obligations that aren't debts, but they're nonetheless. Yeah, great question. Can you have some ideas. So this $1,000 a month, you said that you were relying on this. Without this, yeah. are you guys way too tight on the budget? It will be tight. I think we'll be about $400 short. Mm. Um, and I... And that's not to say I do feel like we could make some cuts, but that's what kind of gets us down to the 400. We have a big family, uh, seven great kids, six of them live with us. <laughs> and wow. my oldest has some really severe special needs, another daughter with, oh, you know, medical bills are a big chunk of that. Yeah. Yeah, Those this is, so you're saying there's not yeah, a lot of uh, frivolous spending happening lot, in the budget. You know, I, I hesitate to say that. There's always room to tighten the belt. My husband's a school teacher, and I stay home and take care of our, our oldest son. But we are very blessed, so I don't want to give the impression that we're <laughs> sure. doom and gloom. What's your so household income? <laughs> our household income is about um, $80,000 a year. My okay. husband's a hard worker, and he supplements that a lot in the summer. That's awesome. So, Good man. Yeah, it is. Like I said, we're very blessed. <laughs> so what's left on the mortgage? 150000 hundred fifty. Nine years. Yeah. Okay. And you guys, are you're out of debt completely except a home. Do you have a fully yep. funded emergency fund? 
We have about $2,000 in the emergency fund. Okay. Feels like we need to up that for a family of seven. What would three to six months of expenses look like for you guys if you put a number on it? A lot more than that. <laughs> 20 grand? Well, our expenses are about, I'm just doing some quick math, about 4000 a month. Okay. So we're looking at three months would be 12. And because it's he's the only um, you know, earning income in the house, it feels like you want to lean towards yeah. six. When you got seven kids, you got special needs. So that looks more like $24,000. Yeah, probably so. I feel very happy inside to have that. There we go. This is what I want for you, happiness, freedom. So yes. <laughs> outside of that, is your husband investing 15% of his income into retirement? You know, no, not separate than what his employment invests. He's like, say, a school teacher, and uh, they fully fund his retirement. So there's a mandatory kind of contribution that they're they're putting in from their money, not his? Yep. No, they pay his contribution. They pay his part. Okay. They pay their part, and then they pay his. Well, I want to encourage him to, to begin investing 15% of the income. I know it feels tight right now, but there's a okay. lot of there's a lot of variables in the situation. What's that? It's my, the scary part to me is I know we have to pay our bills, and without being able to eliminate those, we do have some pieces of property I thought maybe we should. It w- again, it wouldn't fix the we don't quite have enough to pay off the home. You know, we probably have about fifteen thousand dollars in a little little chunk of land down the street. It's not doing anything it's for us. It's just sitting there. So. You're just paying property taxes on it there. for fun. We do. It's not a lot. We're in a real rural area, but it is probably about a hundred dollars a year. Okay. I mean, Nothing, nothing major. Okay, well, no, it's not great. <laughs> as far as this lump sum, I would go ahead yeah. and. I would take, you know, if you have $2,000, I would go ahead and take 22000 and add it to that savings account to give you a fully funded emergency fund. Okay. Now, okay. that leaves you with 76000 And the truth yes. is, I want you to pay down the house. Paying down the house is not going to solve all of your problems. It's not going to create any extra cash flow for you right now. Uh, yeah. And, but I still want it to go towards the house. That should still be your next goal. Obviously, we need to be, you know, funding college if that's on the table for all of these kids. Is that is that part of the conversation? Oh, I make them pay for their own. <laughs> you just said work. you're on your own, kids. We can't afford it. <laughs> I, you know, they've so far they've paid they've paid for their own. I have one married daughter and uh, two 19 year old boys that are placed to serve mission for our church. But um, when they get back and pick up their college again, they'll they'll have to pay for it themselves. I think unless we get really rich between now and then. Hey, I want that for you. And it can happen. I mean, you guys aren't, you're not doing bad. I want you to realize that you're not in a destitute situation losing this thousand dollars a month. Yeah, no, it's a, it's like a mixed blessing. I feel it's a blessing. I just, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I, if I'm you guys, I'm going to follow the baby steps and you could put a chunk away for college, but if you've already had the conversation and you said, Hey, kids, you're on your own and they, they understand that and they know, Hey, we're not going to go into debt. We're not going to do student loans, but you've got to figure out a way. Then, yeah. then you're moving on to baby step six, which is paying off the home early. And so you're going to knock out half of the yeah. mortgage, leaving you guys with 74000 on the mortgage. Are you putting any yeah. extra on the mortgage beyond the payment? We aren't. We aren't. Okay. We aren't right now. I'm not sure we have the best interest rate. Um, I don't know. What are you Maybe at right now? Do you know? Oh, we're at 4.5. Yeah. I mean, I, are you on a 30-year? No, we did a 10-year. Oh, a 10-year. Okay. Well, I mean, you could refinance. Yeah. Obviously, look at the break-even analysis on that and figure out, okay, if we're going to pay 5000 in closing costs, how quickly are we going to make up for that with the lower interest rate? And I like it for it to be two years or less, three max. And so you can look at that as an option um, to see, especially once you have a $75,000 mortgage, if you can refinance on that, your payment's going to shrink. You know, I didn't think about that, but will a bank refinance? I I feel really unwilling to go longer than ten. I, but maybe I'm maybe that's not the right thinking. Maybe I need to say, yeah, we'll refinance for ten and do the seventy five, and then we can meet that obligation. I think I, you I can do think better than that. that. I think we can. We need to work on this budget. Are you guys doing a household budget every month on paper and tracking I do. it? I do. I do do down to the penny. Wow, way yeah. to go. Yeah, well, I do. Look, I would do an yeah. audit of that and go, hey, are we getting the best rates on our insurance? Are we getting the best rate over okay. here? Do we need the subscription right now? And I think cutting this temporarily and having that emergency fund in place, you're going to feel such a weight off of your shoulders because you are yeah, you sure are you super might. mom that right now. Good. You're well, incredible. I, I don't know. We're trying. Like everybody around us, we're trying to do our best. 
Well, so. just know that that we are we are rooting for you. We are in your corner. Appreciate um, that. I would definitely yeah. pay down the house, look at a refinance after that, and see if it makes sense for you, and tighten up that budget. But right now, there's not a lot of other options. You you can't go to work. Yeah. Well, if you give me some things to think about, though, I I like the idea maybe of refinancing the 75, and definitely like the idea of the emergency fund. So maybe I'll just get brave and say we're doing it. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for the call. We are in your corner, man. Seven kids. I cannot imagine. I've got two dogs at home and I feel overwhelmed. I've got nothing to complain about. Wow. Good times. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality and host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. And I've got a special guest for you this segment. One of our newest personalities, Christina Ellis, joins me. Christina, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So you've been on the team now uh, since October. Yes. A few months in. How are you feeling? I'm loving it. I just crossed my 90-day mark, so I'm feeling pretty good. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we are so excited to have you on the team to help us disrupt this toxic culture around student loans, higher education, and parents, and society, and guidance counselors. There's like a thousand villains that you can point at in this situation. Oh, yeah. It's it's crazy right now. Debt has been so normalized in this space. We are selling 18 year olds debt where they think that taking out student loans that it's just normal that it's just part of the process and that's not okay i'm so proud of the work that ramsey's done with borrowed future and just bringing light to that situation it really disrupts that toxic culture and it shows students you know this is not the way to go and there are other ways that we can fix this yeah but there's definitely a, a lie that was sold at least to me and i know many many people out there where we we as a society we said hey if you just do really good in school and you get great grades you'll have an amazing life you'll go to your dream school and life's going to work out for you but unfortunately as you realize, you, I, I wanted to go to the school, and I got in. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I got approved to my dream school. And I got $0, Ooh. and it was $200,000 for the four years for basically a film degree. And even not knowing Dave back then, I was like, this feels like a bad deal for me. I'm not doing this. So I ended up going to a state school. I was out of school for a year, went back to school, finished up, and still ended up with $36,000 in student loans. And I thought, well, I did better than two hundred grand. That's the thing is I talk to students all the time who just kind of shrug off student loans like, ah, yeah, it's no big deal. It's what everybody's doing. It's what all of my friends are doing. And it's important to highlight like, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, my story, I won a half a million dollars in scholarships. I was able to go to school debt free. My mom really lit a fire in me early. She basically said my freshman year, you know, Christina, you're on your own for paying for college. So you need to figure out a strategy. And I'm so thankful she had that conversation early on because it gave me time to think about what I was doing and try to see like, are there other ways I can go to college? Do I have to follow this notion that you have to take out student loans? And I learned that you don't. Yeah, it really comes down to having a plan, having a strategy, and having the conversation early. I mean, we just I just took a call, and she's got seven kids, and she was very honest with them. And she said, hey, you're on your own. But I appreciate that honesty versus, oh, we'll figure it out. We'll right. figure it out. And what figuring it out looks like is co-signing hundreds of thousands of dollars in loans, and then everyone's frustrated. Absolutely. Not a solution. 
Yeah, it's a tough pill to swallow, you know, to tell your kids, you know, we can't afford college. It's hard. We know when my mom told me freshman year of high school, I was like, why are you telling me this? I am a freshman. What can I do about it? But at the same time, you know, I knew she was just trying to be real with me. You know, my dad, he passed away when I was seven from cancer and my family struggled financially. So even though it was tough, like I'm thankful she had the courage to have that conversation because it just it needs to happen. That conversation doesn't need to be had with somebody selling your students student loans. Oh. Yeah. It needs to happen with parents. Yeah, well, we have a high school curriculum out there uh, through our Ramsey education team, and I got the pleasure of hosting it. And it was so eye-opening as I sat down with high schoolers, and I was asking them basic questions. Where do you want to go to school? What do you want to do? How much do you think that'll pay? How much will that school cost? And I didn't realize it was going to be an interrogation. There were kids running out of there crying after we were oh. done. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm the first one to ask them these questions. Their parents are not talking to them about the future. They're just going, la, 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 I have shame and guilt and baggage from my own financial past, and we're just not going to talk about money because that's that's the healthy way to, to handle our families. And having that conversation, as much as it might be painful, man, it's so freeing in your situation where you went, okay, at least I know what I need to do now. Right, exactly. A lot of kids don't have that wisdom and insight early on, even just career wise. A lot of students think, you know, I have to go to the fancy school if I'm going to be successful. Like I have to go to a name brand school and a lot of those schools cost $70,000. And that's just not true. You know, if you walk around Ramsey, it's a competitive workplace. You know, we have amazing people here. And if you ask people where they went to school, a lot of people went to community college. A lot of people went to an online school. A lot of people, you know, just took non-traditional routes and they're still here working next to people people who did go to prestigious schools. So, you know, the reality is that you don't have to go to the fancy school to be successful. That is true all across workplaces in America. You'll have somebody sitting at a desk that went to an Ivy League and you'll have somebody sitting right next to them that went to community college. So you have to just find your own path to success that's debt free. Oh, yeah. And these days with the digital space that we live in, there are just so many opportunities. I mean, MIT has so many free courses out there where you're learning the same things that you would inside of the classroom that would cost you, you know, know, thousands upon thousands of dollars. Right. And now there's amazing certificate programs. You know, there's digital marketing certificate programs. There's all sorts of like coding boot camps and things that you can do online that'll get you incredible jobs that make great money. So it's like, think outside of the box, explore your options. There's not just one right path. Yeah. And that's one of those things that we need to keep beating the drum on because students do think, well, if I don't go to college, I'm I'm a nobody. Like all of my friends went and here I am in my in my town and I'm just not going to have a great life now. Well, and what's crazy is that trade school, that's still a great option. The trades are not going away. And the thing is, is no matter how hard the economy gets, no matter what the world looks like, we still need electricians. We still need plumbers. So it's like college isn't the only right route. It's the right route for a lot of people, but the right route for a lot of people is also going to be trade school. It's going to be all these different options that are out there. So it's important to figure out, you know, what is right for you? What is right for your student, even if it doesn't look like what everybody else does? Yeah. And one of the problems is we live in such a comparison culture and it's so it's so much about your, your status and social media. And what I'm seeing is the number one job that students want is to be an influencer and to be a YouTuber. And while that's great that they want to have an impact in that way and they want to be front and center, that's fine. You know, we're, we're on camera, we're in front of microphones. There's nothing wrong with, with wanting that. But I question the motive behind it and the heart behind it and going, man, what do you really want to, like, what do you really want to apply full force in your life? What do you want to dig into? What is the topic? What is the area of focus? And once you ask those questions, you can get to some really interesting answers. Right, exactly. I also think like speaking of comparison, I think a lot of parents fall into the comparison trap. You know, I've heard parents talk to me and complain to me that, you know, in the high school environment, all these parents are talking about, well, where's your kid going to school? My kid's going to an Ivy League. My kid's going to this fancy school. And they almost feel pressure to have their kid go somewhere fancy or to sign on the dotted line for a parent loan. That's so toxic that the parents are using their, their kids as a pawn to elevate their status. Or I went to this school, therefore my kid needs to go to this school too because this is our legacy. And they're going for the football team and they're going because of the landscaping and the water slides and the world-class cafeteria. And we've lost our daggum minds. Yeah, there's just so much toxic pressure in this space and what results is student loans. Like that's what happens when we don't have these conversations about, you know, what's actually going on and the challenges, you know, people just end up getting kind of roped in to that trap. Yeah. 
So what can parents do? If you're a parent listening out there and you're going, all right, Christina, I haven't saved for my kid's college. I got to have this conversation saying I can't, I can't do this. I can't cash flow it for you. What would you say to that parent? Well, the fact that they even want to have real conversations about money with their kids, that's amazing. There are so many parents that are scared to have that conversation or they just don't think about having that conversation. So let your kids know what they're going to be up against financially. You know, have those real conversations about where you guys are, what what are they going to be responsible for when it comes to college and their future, and then take debt off the table. Like you be the first person to tell your kids, we're not doing debt. Like we're going to go a different direction. Like that's not what we're doing. And then help them cast a vision for their life. I think a lot of kids, you know, they leave high school and they don't really know what they want to do. So so they're vulnerable when they're out there. But, you know, help them cast a vision and connect the dots of like, what does it take to get there? You know, they may not need a four-year degree. They may not need a master's degree. They may need that trade certificate. You know, there's so many different routes that just really lock arms, arms with them and help them figure out what works for them. I love it. Christine Ellis, folks, one of our newest Ramsey personalities focused on this toxic student loan crisis. You can see her in our Borrowed Future documentary. You can stream that on Apple TV, Google Play, Amazon, you name it. Christina, so awesome having you on the team. Thanks for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. This is The Ramsey Show. the Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel. You jump in America and we'll talk about your life and your money. The number to call is 888-825-5225. Steve joins us from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Steve, welcome to the Ramsey Show. My afternoon, sir. How you doing? How can I help? Uh, I'm doing great. Another day being alive. It's a good thing. I love that Uh, attitude. Just got a question for you. Um, I'm, I turned uh, 60 back uh, six, seven months ago. We got about 80 some thousand left on our house. Um, and I'm just kind of curious if it would be wise to take money that we have set aside from our 401k and stuff to pay off the house and be debt free. Mm. So how much is in the retirement account? Um Roughly, well, it all depends how the market keeps going. If it keeps going away, it's not going to be much. Uh, about 750000 Okay. And is that everything you have saved for retirement? Yep. All right. And you're still working? Yep. What's your household income? Uh, before taxes, just around fifty. Fifty before tax. Okay. And you have no other debt? You just have this mortgage payment? You have a savings account with three to six months of expenses? Uh, yes. There was some, I, I want some, I want confidence here, Steve. <laughs> you have it? Well, yes, we, yes, we do. Uh, I got about roughly about 20, 20,000 set aside. Okay, good. But I was kind of thinking to take that and then some of the money from the 401k oh, dear. to pay off the house. No, 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 Steve. Well, you're, you're saying you're retired, right? I mean, you're, you're still working, no, but you I'm can not, take this money I'm out penalty working. free. Yep. I mean, it's if I'm if I'm in your shoes, I definitely want to be free of this mortgage. And making 50k, how much margin do you have in your budget every month? Uh, not a lot, really. There's not, not a lot of margin. Well. You're saying if if we continue down this path, path, I'm not going to be able to pay off the house anytime soon. If we continue the way we are, and if my plans go the way that I want to and not the way God wants to, um, I could have it paid off in, you know, five to six years. Okay. And do you plan on working for the next five to six years? Uh, if I have to, if I have the house payment, probably. Yeah. 
Well, I want you to have a great retirement. Is this everything you have to your name? Is the seven hundred fifty thousand plus the house? Yes. Yeah, What's the house worth? Well, three hundred. Okay. So we're close to to baby step billionaire status if you're not already there with all of your assets, right? Yeah. Way to go, man. That's awesome. So, that's something that yeah, very know, few know, Americans that's, that's, have achieved. It's a great that's a great thing and everything, but you know, maybe it's just me and I just you know got this debt and I want to get rid of it because I'm sick and tired of it. Sure. Or What's the payment every was, month? Uh, eight fifty. Okay, so not it's not a major part of your world or even your income at this point. No, and we're, we're paying extra on it every month as it is. Okay, good, good. That was my question, is how much margin you had. You know, Could you just pay this off and let your retirement sit where it is and continue to grow? But there's nothing wrong now that you you can take this money out penalty-free, and that'll free you up. I know you're unplugging some of the, the compound growth there, but when you're freed up from that payment, you're going to be able to invest even more, right? Mm -hmm. Would that be your plan? Yeah, that would be my plan because I'm thinking, you know, well, uh, if you get take home, you know, thirty some a year times five, that's one hundred fifty thousand. You know, plus the interest. Yeah. Well, yeah. now that you're of this age, I mean, I, you know, obviously we we tell people never to take money out of retirement, but you're of retirement age, and therefore now is the time to start to use this money for your benefit. And getting out of debt, including your house, that is one of those benefits. So if I'm in your mm -hmm. shoes, yes, I will take just enough to get rid of this house payment, and then I'm going to invest like crazy. I'm going to try to increase my income, even as you uh, enter into your 60s and continue to work. I'm going to try to get that income up so that we can have a great retirement instead of, you know, try to ration it all out, even though it's 750. I want it to be million plus. Should I just take it from the retirement fund or should I take what we have set aside too? No, I want you to don't touch that because that's your emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, you know, I'm also thinking too, though, if I get that, take that and less from the, the 401k, then the emergency fund will get built up just as quick. Well, I don't want you to deplete the, this is not an emergency. You know what I mean? This is this is paying down the house. You're going to get there. You're going to build it up fast. But I don't want you to deplete your emergency fund in order to pay off the house faster. Because mm -hmm. then when an emergency hits, you're screwed. And so I would take the exact money out. You said you have uh, how much left on that mortgage? 80000 Roughly 80, yeah. So you're going to take 80 from that 750 in the retirement account. And then you're going to invest that new 850 you have back in your life into... You're, you can do catch-up contributions. You can invest like a crazy person so that you can retire with, you know, $1.5 million in five years. Mm -hmm. That's okay. what I want for you. Okay. So I was going back and forth on a couple of different ways of doing it. I wasn't sure if it was a good thing to do or not, you know. Well, now that you're of age, there's no penalties. That, that's what I would do personally if I was in your shoes, Steve. Get rid of that mortgage payment. And a lot of people may say that's backwards because you're missing out on the returns. But guess what? Right now, not a lot of returns to be had. So freeing yourself up from that payment is going to reduce all of the risk that you have in your life. Thanks for the call. Jill joins us now in Scottsdale, Arizona. Jill, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi there. Thanks hey. for having me. Sure. How can I help? Hey. Well, I'm having a car conundrum. Mm. <laughs> um, I am one of those folks that keeps their cars forever. Not that I'm particularly attached, but I just do. And I purchased a car in 2003 at the Hummer. It was an H2. I paid cash. Uh, I was able to because my grandparents had passed and left me some money. So I am at a point now where my car is 18 years old. Wow. And every other month, stuff is going on. So um, I put a deposit, a small deposit down. New Hummers are coming out. I would like to stick with my brand. And, oh, you um, want to stick with the Hummer? Not, okay. Yeah, it's going to be electric this time. Not sure how that's going to work out. But uh, after I do my due diligence, we'll see. <laughs> But I don't know how to go about this because obviously I can't pay cash like I did. I mean, I forked out about 70000 for that um, back in 2003. So just trying to figure out how much to finance and, you know, if, you know, what to pay, you know, put down. I've got some time before they're going to be available. I believe 2004 early is when they're going to be um, available. So I want to start saving. Yeah, I can simplify yeah. this for you. You're going to finance $0. That makes life zero dollars. That's okay. how much. Yeah. <laughs> so I want you to pay cash for this car. You don't. You do not need to go into debt for a depreciating asset. That's not going to set you that up is, for success. Yeah. So that how much is this car? Is what's the car cost? 
Okay, it's this time around it's going to run about 80, 85. Holy 85. crap. What is your household income? Um, I pull in a total right now in my new career. <laughs> 60 about 61,000, but I've got um I've got some investments sitting. Chill, um, chill. Oh my gosh, my head is on the desk. <laughs> you make $60,000 and you want to buy an $85,000 vehicle? I don't have any debt. It doesn't matter. That is more okay. than your annual income tied up in a depreciating <laughs> asset. Okay. So don't finance, pay cash. Yes. that's And here's the thing. So just, this car is too okay. much of your world. Our parameter around vehicles, anything with a motor in it, is it should not add up to more than half of your annual income. So if you're telling me you make 60 k okay. we got to get you a 30 k car. And now the situation was even different. If, even if you keep them for 18 years? I mean, I've only put 10 grand. Even if you keep them for 18 years, you're still going to get screwed okay. on this deal. And what, okay. I, what I want for you, now with the inheritance, that was a different situation. I still would have told you that's way too much car to be buying. And I know that you see the shiny commercials and electric. Oh, man, it's so much nicer than mine. <laughs> but you're just not at a place to do that for where it makes sense for your, your future. And I know you don't have debt. No, Are I you, understand. Do you have an emergency fund? I used to make a lot more money. I used to make a lot more money. So when I changed careers, it, I, it, my income got cut in like half. So. Sure. Are and you I a millionaire? I my daughter for 10 years. Um, I was. <laughs> um and I did stay home with my daughter for 11 years when she was born. So okay. I, I made that decision, and I'm happy I did, but I'm in a different position now. So Yeah. Well, I appreciate the call. Uh, I definitely would not spend $85,000 on a car making sixty k. I want you to pay cash and do it where it's no more than half of your income. And that means you're going to look for a great used Hummer, if that's what you want, that is under thirty grand. And you can look to the future for that electric one. Once it depreciates in value, you can go ahead and buy it. Appreciate the call. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Ramsey personality George Camel. And this is your show, America. Let's talk money. Give us a call, 888 5225 John kicks us off this hour in Vancouver, Canada. John, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Well, welcome. Hello, can you hear me? Sure. How can I help? So I'm planning to buy an electric vehicle in the near future. Okay. It's, yeah, it will be my first vehicle purchase. Wow. Cool. How old are you? Yeah. Uh, 25. 25, okay. Have you been driving uh, yeah. something else that is not yours? Yeah, my parents' cars, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so what's your and, question? Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at, like, because like, we have a carbon tax in Canada, and it's, like, keeps going up every year, you know. That I'm you pay on gas vehicles? Like, if you own a gas vehicle, you have to pay an extra tax? Yeah. What is the tax, do you know? It's... Like, it's Right now, it's about ten cents a liter. Okay. For carbon, so it keeps going up every year, and I'm trying to think about you know switching to an electric and buying one for myself and the potential savings and yeah. All right. So, uh, are you? Do you have any debt right now? No, no, I have no debt. I have about fifty thousand in savings. Wow. Good and for you, another man. twenty twenty thousand in a tax free savings account, which is like a Roth IRA, and then I have another twenty thousand in a RSP, which is like a four hundred one k. Good for you, man! You've been crushing yeah. it. What do you do for a living? I work in warehousing. I operate a forklift and cool. do a bunch of distribution and stuff. What's your income? 
It is right now 60000 a year. Okay. And have you researched these electric vehicles? Do you know which one you want, what the price point would be? Uh, yes, I've looked at it. I've also looked at rebates and stuff like for buying electric vehicles as well. Sure. Both federal and provincial. Okay. So what's the price of this car if you went onto the lot and bought it today without any of the rebates? Uh, Toyota RAV4 Prime. It's around $50,000. Oh, boy. Yeah. Dude, that's almost your entire income tied up in a depreciating almost, asset. Yeah. Were you listening yeah, to the last call? I'm, no, I, I'm just building my income. This is like not like current years, a few years in the future, because it's at least a one-year waiting list for these electric vehicles. Okay, so you're going to keep driving your parents' car in, until you purchase a vehicle? Yes. And you're, you're doing this to save money. Uh, yes, yes. So we're going to spend $50,000 to save money. In the long term, yes. But do you understand the difference? No, here? I understand. You could buy a $15,000 car, which means you would have to be paying $35,000 extra in carbon tax and gas and all of these things in order to make up for the fact that you bought a $50,000 electric car. No, I understand. It's not. I'm just looking at all these electric bills. That's why I'm thinking long term. Not. Um, I understand. It's well, if we're thinking long term, we've got to realize yeah. that cars are a depreciating asset, whether they're gas or yeah. electric. No, I understand. Okay. I understand that. Well, I'm not trying to beat up on it's you. Just, I just want to think yeah. through this critically with no, you. No, I know. I, I. That's why I'm planning, like looking at all the numbers, and I just wanted some advice from yeah. your end. Well, we also don't recommend you buy a new car unless you are a millionaire. Because you can't take okay. the hit on depreciation, making sixty k a year, buying a fifty thousand dollar car that's going to depreciate every single month. Yeah. And so if I'm you, yeah. if you're going to make sixty k, let's say a year from now you're still making yeah. about sixty k, it's not yeah. going to go up to two hundred thousand in warehousing. Yeah. So what I want you to do is take thirty or less and buy you a used electric car if that's something that you're still wanting. Okay. I'm just no. There's there's cheaper electric cars. So I'm just looking at all the ones that have rebate options. But it's to, if you spend fifty grand and get a five thousand dollar rebate, you still spent forty five thousand dollars. If you bought a twenty thousand yeah. dollar electric car with no rebate, you still saved thirty thousand dollars. Do you see the math I'm doing here? Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. So I, I don't, I, I don't want your judgment to get clouded yeah. by rebates and credits, and because truthfully, it, it, you yeah. want the newest shiny electric vehicle, right? I mean, who wants to drive a used one if you could drive a new one? I just don't think the used electric vehicles are that plentiful but because there's already a waiting list for new electric vehicles in canada or where i live in vancouver at least well they're so out there you might have to the get future. there first i mean it's like yeah. a hot home market you just might need to get there first yeah and, and be willing to to negotiate or you know pay full price or whatever yeah. they're asking but i'm still if i'm you dude you're you're just so young you got your whole life ahead of you i don't want you spending all of this savings that you've worked so hard for to go into a depreciating asset Okay. It's going to yeah, be a no, used I'm, car I'm as soon like, as you drive it off the lot. Yeah. No, I understand. I'm, I'm just thinking like from 10 years from now, 20, because like the industry is going to change to the point where they're going to only make electric vehicles in 2030, 2040 or something. Well, like that. by then we'll all so. live on Mars and we won't even have to deal with cars anymore. <laughs> I, here, I'm just saying, I don't want you worrying about what's yeah. going to happen 10 years from now. I want you to do what's right for you right now and what makes okay. sense for your future. And right now you're... You're 25 years old. You're making 60K. You've done really well. And yeah. I don't want to see that money disappear into this electric vehicle because you, okay. you see the shiny lights of credits and rebates. You know what I mean? It still doesn't make it a wise purchase. No, no, I, I understand. I understand. It's just I'm thinking, you know, this change is going to happen within my generation, within my lifetime. So And when so it does, we'll, we'll deal with it. it. But right now you can afford yeah. 10 cents on a liter even if you didn't get an electric car. Yeah, it's just gas is getting up and up. It's like pretty crazy up here now. It's like around five dollars US a gallon. What's your commutes like? Where are you going? To work and back? Yeah, just to work and back. What's that so, commute? It's like about it's pretty short, like thirty to fifty kilometers. 
Okay. Something like that is pretty short, yeah. Well, it's not that big. You're good at math. You're you're a wise dude. Yeah. And so do the math on this and go, all right, here's really what I'm spending on gas, realistically. Not how I feel about it, but do the math on I go yeah. this many kilometers. Here's the 10 cents per liter. Here's what that really amounts to in my given week. And you go, okay, I'm, I'm, it's about 30 okay. bucks a week for me to, to get around town in this non-electric vehicle. Yeah. And the truth is you can afford it. You're not really saving that much money in the long run. You're already doing great, saving for retirement, doing yeah. all these different things. And so I, I don't want you to justify the electric vehicle purchase because of the money savings. Because truthfully, it takes a long okay. time to, to get a return on investment when buying that electric vehicle, especially if it's new. Okay, I see. You're doing great, man. Yeah. I love Canadians. They're so nice. John, you're an awesome dude. I'm so proud of you. You've done so well. I don't want you to move backwards by spending $50,000 on a car when you make 60. dollars It's just not a wise move right now. Later on down the road, you're making $120,000. You're a millionaire. Go ahead and buy you a $50,000 brand new electric vehicle and give me a call back. I might be 58 years old by then. Hopefully, I'm still doing the show. We shall see. This is the Ram- <laughs> This is the Ramsey Show. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper. Jumpstart your CFO career. gone through a life emergency you weren't prepared for financially and that definitely includes me you know that sick to your stomach sweaty palms feeling all too well as a parent you hope your child never has to go through an experience like that but teaching teenagers how to be smart with money before they make dumb mistakes like we did can feel like a big job You don't have to resort to the School of Hard Knocks to teach your kids about money. With our digital self-study courses, your teen will learn the right way to handle money no matter what curveballs life may throw at them down the road. And the best part? No instructor needed. If your teen has a tablet or a computer, they're all set to start learning how to budget, save, and invest, even how to write a resume and start their own business. Parents, get your kids off to a great financial start and go to RamseySolutions.com slash self-study to learn more about all of the different courses we have available for your middle or high schooler. Megan joins us in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Megan, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Welcome. Uh, I'm happy to be here. (laughs) Great having you. How can I help? Um, I am, me and my husband are 25 years old. We are newlyweds. Uh, how do I get my husband motivated with me to pay off our $22,000 debt? That's a great question. And congrats. How long have you guys been married, married for now? Uh, in two months, it'll be a year. Wow. Okay. So we're coming up on a year and you guys are not on the same page financially. What are the conversations like? Where's his mind at and where's yours at? Well, he, uh, I am all gung ho for it. Um, I am currently in a job that I'm very happy with, but I don't make very much money. And he is in transition to make a significant, drastic change in our uh, wealth. What does that mean? Is he about to make a lot of money in a new job? 
Uh, yes, uh, he's currently in training to get his CDL. Uh, we were making about 60000 and now we're jumping up to uh, $120,000. Awesome. Doubling the income, just like that. And yeah. so he's going, well, the debt's not a big deal. Where's his mindset around the, the Ramsey plan? Because clearly you want to do this plan and he doesn't. Uh, he he is, oh, we have so much money now. What can I spend it on? New car, new new everything. Lifestyle creep. And so I'm he's like, going, let's, sweet, let's yes. increase our lifestyle now that we have more money and we can continue to be broke. Yes. <laughs> Man. Well, uh, you're not alone in that problem. A lot of couples – deal with this, especially early on in the marriage. And the sooner we can get you guys on the same page, the better it's going to be for your future. And so what I like to start with is the why. Have you had a conversation with him about what our hopes and dreams are for the future? Instead of saying, hey, Dave Ramsey said we need to get out of debt. Have you said, hey, what do you want our future to look like? What do you want to do? When do we want to retire? Uh, I We talked a little bit about it, what we want in life and where we see our lifestyle being. So what what do you but think is wrong house. with your picture currently of of your financial situation? What are you feeling? Uh, crushed. I feel crushed in uh, my car payment, our house, our student loans. Does he know that? What we owe as parents? Oh yeah. If, uh, if I see my says, wife crushed, it. it changes me. If she says, "Hey, mm-hmm. honey, I'm I'm feeling so stressed. I have so much anxiety about all of these payments." I just really want to get rid of these payments and move on with our lives. Have you said that to him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but usually the conversation goes with, don't worry about it. I, I, I got to handle, but it's a we thing, not a I will handle it thing. Oh, so he, he feels like he's the savior here? He's like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. I'm about to make a lot of money. You're not going to feel a pinch here. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, the second thing we can do is is math. Numbers don't lie. I don't know if he's a numbers guy. But show him yes, on paper that the plan can work. Show him what you're paying in interest uh-huh. on these payments. And, hey, we're paying $1,000 in payments every month. Imagine if we had that back in our life. And now we had you know, $12,000 extra dollars a year to do what we wanted and to travel and to upgrade the car and do these house renovations. And once you do that on paper and go, and you know what? I think we can do this in like six months. This is not going to take a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And it's going to make our lives so much better. Have you done that with him? Uh, he's actually been gone, so I haven't physically been able to do that. Oh, he travels a lot because of the his industry, driving around. Yes. Okay. Well, when he's back, I want you guys to, to have a real conversation and look him in the eyes. Hold his face if you need to and go, I know you're telling me not to worry about it. I'm worried about it. I want this debt gone. Here's the math. Here's what this looks like. Have you guys gone through Financial Peace University together? Uh. I had the opportunity to do that, but my sister was going to pay for it, but the check got lost in the mail, and I never had the guts to tell her it never showed up. Oh, that's very sweet. Well, how about this? I will do you a favor, and I will gift it to you. I'm going to gift you a year subscription to Ramsey Plus. After we're done on the phone here, Jenna will pick up and get you connected to that. And here's my only ask is that you sit down with him Mm -hmm. when he's home, and you Mm -hmm. watch all of the Financial Peace University videos together. And you actually pay attention, Mm -hmm. put the phones away, no distractions, Mm -hmm. and you have a conversation after each video about how you're feeling about it and what what, what you're excited about, Mm -hmm. what you're scared about. And when you do that, Mm -hmm. I want you to also do the every dollar plus budget that comes with Ramsey Plus. And I want you to start doing Mm -hmm. this on paper. I'm guessing you guys aren't doing a monthly Mm -hmm. budget, at least he's not. Uh, no, it's kind of we wing it, and then we'll look, check our bank accounts later. And you start to out outspend your stupid. Yes. Just out-earn it. Well, that's another thing you guys got to start doing and say, hey, here's my one requirement. We've got to do a budget every month, and we're going to track it, and we're going to see how much we actually mm-hmm. spend. And that might change him too. He might go, oh, my gosh, I had no idea we were spending $850 on food for the two of us. This is insane. Yeah. So if you do all of those things – It's kind of one of those – uh huh. If you do all of those things and it doesn't work, you might need to look into working with a marriage counselor if he's just totally unwilling to do uh-huh. any of this. Because that tells me this is beyond a financial thing. This is I've got to figure it out. I have the answers. I'm going to save us. And that is not marriage. That's not a team mentality. No. 
And money p- fights and money problems are the number one cause of divorce in America today. And you guys are are bright, young, happy couple, and I want to keep it that way. And part of that is getting on the same page financially. And so do the math. Start with the why. Explain to him how you're feeling. Ask him, hey, George gifted me Financial Peace University. My ask is that you would just sit with me and watch these videos. And if he's unwilling to do that, we've got deeper problems. Agreed? Mm-hmm. Yep, agreed. But we need to get rid of this debt, me and you. I mean, if he's not going to do it, someone's got to, right? We got $22,000 yeah. in debt. What kind of debt is this? Uh, this is student loans, car payments, loans he owns to his parents. So it's heavy. There's a lot. Is that affecting the personal yeah. relationship, or his parents just cool with it sitting out there? Do they want this money back? Uh, they want it back because uh, they – now are taking care of his sister's kid, so they need the money to support an uh, unexpected kid. And you know what that causes on the parent side? Resentment mm-hmm. towards him. And he they see him spending like crazy, having the time of his life, all the while they're owed all of this money that he said he would pay back, which makes Thanksgiving dinner yeah. really awkward. Yeah. Right now, you care more about this than he does, and I need you guys to have an equal effort in this marriage and in your finances. And so Jen is going to pick up. We'll get you connected with Ramsey Plus. Make sure that you dig into it together because if you just do it on your own, we're back to where we started. In fact, you're worse off because now you're even more on fire to do this stuff, and he's just going further and further away. Yep. So, I mean, it's going to be a hard conversation. It may take multiple conversations, but he's got to be willing to put in effort here. That is the key. So hold on. Jen is going to pick up. We will get you connected with Ramsey Plus. uh, And know that you're not alone. Couples all over America are listening, and they're going, oh, my gosh, I remember doing that. But I'll tell you, when we have these debt-free screams on the stage, the number one thing that people say, this is what got us on the same page, it's going through Financial Peace University. And here's why. It gives you shared language, shared goals, shared vision around your money. And when you do that, your entire marriage is going to improve, not just your money, every single part of your marriage. You're going to be holding hands on the debt-free stage, and he's going to be sitting there going, yeah, I was uh, avoiding it, but we finally did it. And man, I'm so glad we did. It was so worth it, and our marriage is better than ever. That is what I want for you, and that's what I want for every young couple in America. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. personality and host of the fine print podcast you are listening to the ramsey show if you haven't checked out the fine print it's where i talk about the hidden truths that are keeping people broke season one is out right now with 11 episodes and if you're not where you want to be financially you don't know what to do or where to turn you're listening to headlines and social media and your broke friends for money advice this is the podcast for you Making the right choices doesn't have to be complicated. I jump in. I do the research for you. I break down money myths, trends, and traps that you need to know about so that you can make smarter decisions for your life and your money. You can check out the fine print on the Ramsey Network or wherever you listen to podcasts. Ryan joins us in Pittsburgh. Ryan, welcome to the Ramsey Show. 
Hey, how are you doing? Oh, man, this is great. I have a crew that listens to you guys on oh, the radio. Uh, and we're out you got me day. pumped, it's man. Awesome. It's great to hear from you. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. How can oh, I help Oh, my today? God, you guys are such a legend. I can't believe this is the first time I ever got through. Wow, <laughs> you are the first person to ever call me a legend, so I appreciate that. <laughs> um, What's going on? So, uh, well, I, I kind of have a unique situation. Um, I started building my own house um, when I was young. And the goal was every three years to sell them so I didn't have to pay the capital gains um, and then eventually not have a mortgage or anything. Um, but my wife's tired of moving around since we had kids. And uh, so right now we owe like $150,000 on our house. On your and, primary residence? Yeah. I mean, it's probably worth like 300000 because I, I, it's all material that uh, I – you know, no labor or anything, um, or contractors. I did, did it all myself, so it's wow. probably worth three hundred thousand. But the the uh, other issue is, I I have a job too that I make fifty thousand dollars on, and we have a couple of rental properties that we own outright. Um, How many? We were one, uh, two, two properties. What we, are they? What are they worth? Total. Um, together, together. I mean, we're out in West Virginia. They're not worth much. I think I got them appraised at both for like, like fifty thousand, fifty five thousand. Okay, each of them. Uh, no, both? no, together. Combined. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. And and well, here's the issue. I, I got two issues. Do you think I should build another house and try to get all the equity? Because I think I could build one out of the uh, house prices that I could sell this for, I could probably build it without a mortgage on the same, because we have so much land, I could build another house on the same property, subdivide them. Or do you think I should keep the mortgage? And I have, I do have like 60 some thousand dollars in auto loan um, oh, man. where I could, I could take the rental property and, and pay those, pay those off or or hunker down and and so like my wife's a traveling nurse she could get a contract and pay all that off too so what's your household um, income well that's that's the thing like i make 50 grand a year my wife makes 60 grand a year but that doesn't like really tell the true worth because again the salary for the houses that we sell every three years they we make probably another like 40 grand a year on top of that um without reporting it as actual earned income <laughs> Interesting, because of the you're avoiding the capital gains, right? By staying there for three years. Uh, what what are these auto loans? Are these multiple cars or one? Yeah, so my my wife owes twenty five thousand. I know my boss is really mad because I didn't stay with the Ramsey plan like we always have. We did it all within the last six months. Um, but so far, my... nothing you've told me sounds like you you listen to the show, but you do nothing we say. You've got a, know, you've got a pile well, of debt, man. So, you're you're robbing Peter to pay well, Paul. Yeah, well, here's the deal: is uh, like it all happened when I had kids. I got I got scared and nervous, and 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 I, I wanted them to have like we were living like like pretty pretty low, and I wanted something better for them. And I guess I wasn't prepared, but I mean, it is possible that we could get out of all of our debt and just have our mortgage with the equity. Um, if we sell our rental properties. Well, dude, you need to simplify your life. I mean, I, if I'm you, I mean, what are these cars worth? Uh, the, well, the one car is worth 25 grand and the other car, uh, I think I would like 35 grand. And is it worth 35, uh, 37, 37, 37 grand. So, so I, I have like, before I bought this car, I had used cars and I would spend weekends on these ten, fifteen thousand dollars car, you know, like putting in transmissions and this and you're that. You're buying the I, wrong I cars, man. Like, you're spending ten, fifteen grand, and you're still doing all this maintenance. You've made some well, interesting decisions. Well, I do. Here. I do, me and the crew, we do block work, so it has to carry. Um, uh, it has to. It has to be a three quarter ton vehicle, um, to to carry like a a, a cube of block. So I need something a so little bit need, more than just. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot, you know? man. I'm hearing a lot of reasons why you're special and you're unique and you need this and you right. need this. But you got right. debt in every corner. Okay. And you're trying to so ahead, help build me. your debt and say, well, if I just build another house, maybe we'll solve this problem. You're like, I mean, right. at, at some point, it's like a crazy person. Right. So if I'm you, right. I'm Go simplifying ahead. my life. I'm gonna 
you clearly are a handy dude. Very impressive young man. How old are you? 35. Dude, you're a rock star. If you can get a hang of this money stuff, you are going to absolutely crush it. But you can't keep yeah. going. I'm going to flip the next house and the next house. Because if you were so good yeah. at this, you would have all your debt paid off if this property right. game yeah. was such a lucrative business. But it's clearly not. Yeah. So if I'm you, okay. I'm going to lean into my career, try to earn more money. If your wife's a travel nurse, they're making bank right now. And so right, I'm going to hunker right. down, sell the properties, and get rid of okay. my, my car debt. And if you're not willing to sell the cars, pay them off really fast because you have $60,000 in auto loans or more. And right. it's over half of your income if you take out the property okay. money, okay. which is not guaranteed. And so you just have right. way too much tied up in motors right now. And I understand that you're sick of fixing transmissions, but you can find a reliable used truck that you're not going to be putting constant work into, uh, especially if you're a business. So if I'm you, I'm yeah. selling the properties. Okay. I'm getting rid of the car debt first before I touch the properties. Okay. We get, get rid of all the consumer debt. Okay. So if you want to speed this process up – you can sell those vehicles. Yeah. You don't have to, but man, it's a big part of your world right now, having that okay. much in car payments tied up every month that okay. you could be using yeah. to pay down your other debt. Right. I mean, so if I if I got rid of the rental properties, um, it, it would cover like ninety nine percent of the the, uh, the 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 car debt, but like. I'd still have a mortgage. Would that be okay? Like, is uh, yeah, that's where and, I want you to be. That's baby step six. Where okay. you're just focused on the mortgage. You're investing fifteen percent of your household income. Do you have kids? Yeah, we have two kids. So you're saving for college after you're investing fifteen percent into retirement accounts, not into crypto. Whatever your your crew says is the hot investment right now. Four hundred one ks, Roth IRAs, those kinds of things. And then we're gonna aggressively attack the house with everything else we have, every every ounce of margin. And if you want to, you know, I, I just don't think you should be going into debt to flip the house to try to make the money back to move it over here. And it's just there's a there's a lot of moving parts here, and I just want some simplicity yeah. for your life where you and your family can breathe easy, and not have to continue this chaos. Okay. Um. The the last thing I was wondering uh was so like we did a like three, four years down in Guatemala, um, did some volunteer work down there. And, uh, we, we bought property down there, uh, with hopes that that would be our retirement since it's so much cheaper. So I didn't invest in a 401k because I invested in those, that property. Um, you think that would be because the healthcare is not bad. So you still have this property in Guatemala? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to pay property tax or anything on it there. It's, it's super cheap. I think I paid like, like, two grand for the property and I built a small house on it. And so and, there's no debt know, on this one. Friends. No, no. Okay. Man, you, uh, you've created just a web of, of wild times for, for you and your family, but you're not scared of work, but you just got to get focused, man. Stay on the baby steps. It's a proven plan. 10 million people have done it. And as special as you think you are, this plan is going to work for you. If you just follow it and don't try to do Ryan's plan which has caused all the chaos that we've discovered today. Man, simplify, simplify, simplify. That is financial peace. That's what I want for you and your family. This is The Ramsey Show. Deuteronomy 7 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Brian Tracy said, The value of a promise is the cost to you of keeping your word. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window covering. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. 
Today's question comes from Angie in California. She said, My husband and I are selling one of our rental properties and will net $245,000. We also have $12,000 in our savings account. We owe $370,000 on our current mortgage and owe $33,000 on a 401k loan. I want to put the whole $245,000 to the principal of my house. That would save us over $181,000 in interest, and we could pay off our house in four years. Should we fund our emergency fund first or pay off the 401k loan first, even though we're just paying ourselves back with interest? That's a great question, Angie. Appreciate it. Here's the thing. You're trying to do a lot of things at once here. You robbed yourself from this 401k loan. You want to pay off the house early because you're mad at the interest, but you're going into debt and you don't have a fully funded emergency fund, and so we just have to stay on the plan. So here's what the plan looks like. If we filter this down through the baby steps, you guys are now at baby step two because of this 401k loan. The good news is you're about to net $245,000 from selling this rental property. So here's what I would do if I was in your shoes. Take the $245,000 and pay off that 401k loan. Plug that money back into your 401k so it can continue to grow and give you guys a great retirement. Now that leaves you with what, $212,000? That's some good money there. And so at that point, we need to fully fund your emergency fund because you're then out of baby step two into three. So that if let's say you know that's $30,000 for you guys, so we're gonna add an additional 18,000 to fully fund the emergency fund, and then the rest of that you can apply towards the mortgage. So no, I would not apply 245 to the mortgage and still leave leave yourselves without an emergency fund and left with this 401k loan. Clean that up first. You can put almost 200 grand on the mortgage, which will bring it down to 170, and then you're in baby step six, and you're going to attack this with a vengeance with all of the margin you have while investing 15% of your income into retirement. If you've guys got kids, we've got to be investing something for college as well. So that's the plan. Don't try to short it. It just doesn't work. The shortcuts will lead you to pain and misery and anxiety and confusion and all kinds of things. Follow the plan. It works every time. Good stuff there. Lori joins us in Los Angeles, California. Lori, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, George. Thanks so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. How can mm-hmm. I help today? Cool. Great. You're the perfect person because my question is regarding... Wow. thank you I have for that. a son that's going to be... You are. You really are. A uh, son that's going to be going to college this August, right? So awesome. um, out of state. So we're concerned about like how we can help him if, in case there's any emergencies. We don't want to financial emergencies. We don't want to open up a credit card for him, which is what we did for our older son, just for like cause books are crazy expensive, right? Or if he has a medical emergency or it's just something else that comes up. But we don't know how to help him because we're not, we can't just, you know, give him money like quickly like that. So without opening up a credit card, what would you recommend that we do to help him stay out of trouble or, you know? Sure. In my hand if he needs that. Well, the first thing I think That's we need to I, take a step back. First of all, awesome job that you are not going to open a credit card for him like you did with your other son. That is the move. The credit mm-hmm. card is the gateway drug into all kinds of other debt as he gets older. So I want him to stay away from debt. Is he able to cash flow the college experience? Yeah, so we have been saving, and we have about two years of, it's, we estimate about $20,000 a year or so um, for college, and we've got about two years um, saved for him. So we should be good there. Okay, that's good news. So as far as him having emergencies in college, I mean, his life is pretty yeah. cushy. Is he living on campus out of state? He's going to be living on campus, yes. Okay. And is he on your health insurance still? Yes. Okay. So as far as financial emergencies, I mean, we've got health insurance, so there's a fear that's taken away there. We're going to be able to to pay for any out-of-pocket medical costs, God forbid something happened, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then the other emergencies, like books, are not emergencies at all, right? We know that we need books every semester. And so that's going to be part of the budget that we use to cash flow the college experience and go, all right, books are going to be $600 this year. They're going to be 750 And guess what? Don't buy them from the campus bookstore. Go buy them used off some used book websites. Go find the digital version. There are so many options out there, and half the time you don't even need the book. So make sure once you get in that class, talk to the professor and go, hey, listen, I don't really have the money to be paying for all these books. Do we really need it? Is this something where I can print it out? Can I work with another student? What are my options here? And see what they say. 
So he needs to get creative, and I want him to, to fight for himself. It's really sweet that you're calling in on his behalf, but I want him to feel the pressure of, I'm a big boy now. I don't live with mom and dad anymore. I've got to figure this out versus you guys, you know, bailing him out. So have you guys had that conversation with him? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we have. But after this call, definitely, I mean, we watched Borrowed Future and just like awesome. kind of put the fear of God into him, <laughs> kind of sort of. But yeah. that kind of, so thank you for that. And I, and I know we're budgeting, we're doing the everyday dollar app and all that stuff too. But so for sure, I think you, you kind of just put it in my head to, in his account, his, his bank account, he just needs to have that money available for the books. That was my biggest fear. But yeah, just, he needs I to have his own emergency fund. Want, I want him to have to figure yes. out, oh gosh, okay, I need to I need to be able to budget for this every semester. Because truthfully, that's the yes. stuff I wish I learned when I went to college. And instead what we do mm -hmm. to our kids is we we baby them, we handhold them, and then they turn 21, 22, and right. they leave college and they go, "Oh my gosh, I have no idea how to do anything." How the I heck know. do you pay for I, things? How so do I budget? How do I file taxes? I, I know. And so that le leads to my second hopefully quick question is that so we don't we have the money, right? So we don't want to take out a loan, but we kind of, we want to know that he has skin in the game, like we did with our older son. Unfortunately, this was before Dave, before we knew about Dave. So we paid for eighty percent of his his tuition, and he paid for twenty with a loan. We paid off our portion already, but he's still paying for it. So now I feel bad that we're helping him pay for it because what's left because he's having a hard time. I don't want to make the same mistake with this one, but I want. So when I told my older son. That you need, we want you to take out a loan so you have some skin in the game. He said, I get it, Mom. That will help me graduate faster. He graduated in three and a half years. So it worked. So, But I don't want to do that to this one because we have the money, but we want him to have some skin uh, in the game too. What well, do you recommend? You know, if can he work part-time while he's in school? Because we found that actually yep. increases your GPA and creates more discipline. Yes. So yes. I, I think you make it a – you make it a requirement and say, hey, you know, this much of what you make or you're going to have to cover this much extra by working over the summer or part-time while you're in school so that you've got skin in the game. Because I, th I do think that's important. Okay. If mom and dad are just cash flowing his life, he's not going to feel the need mm -hmm. to even graduate in four years. He's going to become a six-year graduate because he's having such a great time on your dime. Yep, exactly. Okay. So nothing yeah. wrong with, with putting him to work and going, hey, you're going to you're gonna cash flow $5,000. Make it reasonable. You know, he's not going to make forty grand while yep. he's in college. But make it something reasonable mm -hmm. and tell him debt is not an option. It's off the table, and you're going to have to get creative. You need to apply for scholarships and grants and, and FAFSA and do, do whatever it takes. It doesn't have to be his own money he earned from work, but he's got to cash flow mm -hmm. this thing and get creative. Okay. And that's gonna, really okay. going to make him a better Thank adult, you. don't you think? Absolutely, and that's what we're trying to do. So he's number two, and we don't want to – make a mistake that we did with the first guy because we're helping him get out of it so because we feel bad after we learned what what dave's um you know uh rules of, of engagement were so now we know better yeah well there's nothing wrong with uh, with the kids learning that lesson and I'm, I'm glad you learned the lesson of saying hey we don't want it to be this way i mean you're changing your family tree by saying never again are we going to have a kid that graduates with all this debt and he's going mom dad i thought you were helping me not putting me into debt, yeah. putting me in chains when I graduate and get a job. So you guys are doing amazing. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Thank you for watching the Bar of Future documentary and, and making those changes and wanting to see your kid grow up into a successful adult. That's the goal. Yes. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so, so much, much for the call, Lori. Appreciate it. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Our thanks to Ben running the board today, Jenna on the phones, Kelly, our associate producer, Zach, and Nathan running the YouTube side and the video stuff. And you, America, appreciate you listening on this day where I'm flying solo. Appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much. Spend wisely, save intentionally, give generously. This is The Ramsey Show. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. You can listen to all our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. Browse by topic or even sync clips to your friends. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today.